So far, yeah, I'm really impressed with this Ryzen 7000 powered mini PC, and I can't wait to see what else they release in the future, but for now, this is absolutely amazing. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the first Ryzen 7000 series powered mini PC from Minus Forum known as the UM773. So all in all, we really didn't have to wait long for the 7000 series PCs to release, and this one just happens to be powered by an AMD Ryzen 7735HS. 8 cores, 16 threads, and we're definitely going to get into some performance here. But first up, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Now inside the box, there is a warning straight off the bat. This is using liquid metal to help keep this CPU nice and cool in a super small form factor case here. But we've got basically the same design as their other Neptune series UM models, like the UM690. And that just happens to be my favorite mini PC without dedicated graphics from Menace Forum so far. It's actually a really good performer, but I'm hoping that Ryzen 7000 can beat it out. Now I've always been a big fan of the design here, They've actually done a really great job keeping it nice and small, and the cooling system on these is really unmatched when it comes to these mini PCs. Just taking a quick look at the included accessories, we've got our vertical stand, a 120 watt power supply. This will support a 2.5 inch SATA drive in the bottom of the unit, and we've also got a mounting bracket right here so we can mount it on the back of our monitor or even on the bottom of a desk. Taking a look at the I.O., up front here we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, USB Type-C, which is data only, but we've also got USB 4 up front here, and it is using 40 gig protocol, so we can connect an eGPU, and it will support up to 8K60 out. Around back we've got our power input, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports, two full-size HDMI ports, and these will support 4K60 each, and we've got two USB 2.0 Type-A ports. And just like the other UM models that they offer, we can set this up vertically. Personally, this is the way I like having it. That little stand just makes it look really good and kind of keeps it out of the way. But you can set it horizontally on the desk if you want to. Taking a quick look inside, it's actually really easy to upgrade the RAM and storage here. This does support one 2.5 inch drive and the bottom lid. It does come with the adapter to kind of plug everything in. But uh, you can buy this bare bones or up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD directly from Minus Forum. This just happens to have 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running in dual channel and a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Another thing I wanted to touch base on here was the cooling system that they've been using in these new UM mini PCs. This is definitely one of the best that I've seen in a mini PC and even on the 690M with that 6900HX running at 70 watts, I never went over 85 degrees Celsius with it and the fan wasn't even at 100%. So if you've got this set up vertically in the stand, the air is going to be pulled in from the bottom and it's going to be exhausted in two different locations and that's because there's two thin arrays on this heatsink here for this mini PC. Plus, we've got the addition of liquid metal, which really helps out. Now when it comes to the specs, for the CPU, we've got that Ryzen 7 7735HS. It's still based on Zen 3 Plus, but they've upped the wattage on this. This is actually rated at 54 watts now. 8 cores, 16 threads, we've got a base clock of 3.2 and a boost up to 4.75. Little higher base, little higher boost than previous generation. Graphics are going to be handled by a Radeon 680M iGPU based on RDNA 2, 12 CUs at 2200 MHz. Unfortunately, the HS variant with the 7000 series CPU or APU rather isn't clocked up to 2400 MHz like you'd see in the 6900HX. This supports SODIMM DDR5 RAM up to 4800 MHz. You can go up to 64 gigs here, but I've got 16 for my test rig. We've got room in here for one PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD, one 2.5 inch drive. It does have Wi-Fi 6. We've also got that 2.5 gigabit ethernet port around back. And I'm gonna be running Windows 11 for all of my testing, but we will test out Linux in a future video. All right, so here we are. First look at this Ryzen 7 7735HS powered mini PC. This is actually really awesome to see Ryzen 7000 series released, you know, right after 6000. I know we've had the 6800U and the 6900HX for a little while now, but I didn't think 7000 would hit the market so soon. 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM at 4800 MHz, and we've still got the Radeon 680M iGPU, and with this HS variant, it's only clocked up to 2200 MHz. I was really hoping it was at 24. From the BIOS, we can set the TDP from 25 watts up to 54, 
We're at 54 right now, but we've got to boost up to around 65, and I'll show you that real quick here. From CPU-Z, we'll just do a stress test, and you'll see it jumps right up to 64, 65. So we're sitting good there on that TDP, and the next thing I wanted to take a look at real quick before we jump into some benchmarks in gaming was just these GPU clocks right up there to 2200 megahertz, and the GPU itself is pulling 28 watts. I'll tell you, this actually looks a little lower than the 6800U, you know, totally maxed out. Not sure if there's a difference here, but usually this can kind of go up to around 32, 33 watts. That's definitely something I'm gonna have to look into, and I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, given uh, that we will be seeing Ryzen 7000 series powered handhelds, every watt matters when you're being powered by a battery. So this could definitely come in handy if this GPU, the 680M, is pulling less wattage at the higher clocks. But for now, I wanna jump into a few benchmarks that I ran on this unit, and I did try Geekbench 6, but it kept crashing on me. I tried to reinstall, so I just went with Geekbench 5. We got a single core score of 1502 Multi 9569. Remember, we've got that 64 or 65 watt boost here. We could probably squeeze a bit more out by upping that TDP, but I kind of wanted to leave this thing stock. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 24,510, Fire Strike 6458, and finally, Time Spy with a 2669. Not looking bad, but you know, with some RAM overclocking, we could definitely score higher with these GPU benchmarks because the highest score I've ever gotten out of a Radeon 680M iGPU is around 3100 with Time Spy. That was with a Ryzen 6900HX and 6000 megahertz RAM. And from the BIOS here, it looks like we can do some RAM overclocking. So I will have a video coming down the road if you're interested. But yeah, I mean, with this 4800 megahertz RAM, not looking bad, but these are synthetics and now it's time to check out some AAA gaming. And first up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 900p low settings. I can average 71 FPS, and at 1080 it does dip under unless you take FSR to performance. But you could lock this at 60, 1080 low with FSR at performance on this APU. Or if you want to take some of those settings up, you could do a low medium mix at 720, and it's going to run it just fine. Next up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales 720p low settings. We pulled off an average of 71 FPS, and I will tell you, I mean, we're getting so close to being able to run these AAA games at 1080p, at least low settings with some FSR on with these iGPUs. Locking this at 60, 1080, even low settings is kind of out of the question on the 680M right now. Is it brought in from outside by huge faceless corporations? Here's Injustice 2 at 1080p high, and I've always had really good luck with this game, and even Mortal Kombat 11 on these APUs. Even the Vega series APUs can run this pretty decently at 900p, but I still like throwing at least one fighting game into the mix. And of course, I had to test out my favorite racing game right now. We've got Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, medium settings, no FSR, no fidelity cast on. We can get an average of 81 FPS out of this game. Really amazing performance on these APUs with this game. It's been very well optimized. Here's God of War at 720p original settings. I got an average of 62 FPS, but I did have a few dips under 60, so it's not quite there yet. With FSR set to ultra performance, you can definitely get an average of around 70 FPS, but it's gonna bring that fidelity way down. So I personally have it set up like this, and I think it still looks pretty decent at 720p, but it would have been nice to be able to take this up to at least 900 on this system. GTA 5, I completely understand that it's an older game, but I still love playing it. 1080p, high settings, we got an average of 72 FPS. On this little setup here, at normal settings, it'll actually average around 91, but I wanted to take those settings up. And in fact, even on something like a 5800H with Vega graphics, it's possible to lock this at 60, 1080p, normal settings. And the final one I wanted to test here was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, where at 1080p recommended settings, so it just kind of configures everything for me, and it actually takes FSR to balance. And with it set up like this, we got an average of 91 FPS with a low of 59. If I just went in with a little more tweaking, we could definitely take that low above 60, so yeah, it's really playable on this mini PC. 
And of course, I also wanted to test out some emulation, so I went with a few different systems that I personally like using. We've got Wii U using SimU, Bayonetta 2, 1080p, Vulcan backend, running flawlessly. I mean, this is one of those emulators that just really works very well on these new Horizon APUs. Even something like Breath of the Wild at 720p, 60fps is possible, but personally, I'd play it at 1080p. 30. Next up, we've got some Xbox 360 emulation using Zinnia Canary. So this is kind of the bleeding edge build. Works out really well on these iGPUs. We've got Forza 2 running at over 120 FPS. So I actually got an average of around 123 FPS with this game here. Unfortunately, we're still kind of locked there at 30 with Red Dead and this emulator on these APUs, but even at 30, still a really playable experience. And the final one here is PS3 using RPCS3, upscaled to 1080p, Vulcan back in, we've got Skate 3 running at 60. And as you can see, this is one of those emulators with a game that really does stress out these CPUs. We're right there at 60 watts continuously to run this at 60 1080p. One thing I always like to monitor with these mini PCs is total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. And while this does pull a little more wattage than the UM690, it's not by much at all. And you got to keep in mind that this is actually rated from 45 watts up to 54 over on AMD's website for the 7000 series APU. So at idle, we got an average of 12 watts. Average gaming, 71 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 93 watts, and that's an extreme test there. We're not going to see this much. So far, really liking the performance I'm seeing out of the Minus Forum UM773. This is awesome that we've already got Ryzen 7000 in these mini PCs, and yeah, I know we're going to see a bunch more of these hit the market soon. We'll probably see some handhelds down the road, but I've got a lot more to test with this unit. And I do want to mention that, you know, Minisform does not condone overclocking RAM or adding faster RAM. This is set from the factory at 4800 megahertz. That's what they intend you to use in it. But in the past, I've been able to do a little bit of overclocking with some faster DDR5 on other systems. So I think I'm going to try it here. And if I can get this up to around 5600 or even 6000 megahertz, it'd be worth making another video because it would definitely open up performance on that 680M iGPU. Another thing I'd love to test on this is SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. So if you're interested in seeing any of those videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. And I'd also love to hear from you in the comments below. I mean, what did you think about the performance we're getting out of the first Ryzen 7000 series PC? Personally, I think it's looking really promising. Got a little bit more tweaking and tuning to do, but uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in learning a little more or maybe picking one of these up, I'll leave some links to Menace Forum's website in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.